Hi everyone, I hope you all are well and again I want to encourage my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And today I want to encourage you by talking about the different pathways to breakthrough. I know many of you watching this are waiting for breakthrough from your pain mainly, from the misery, the suffering that you're experiencing, whether it's mental or physical, you just want the pain to stop. You might have tried a lot of things to no avail and now your hope is in God, but it's been a long time where you've been begging God to heal you, to comfort you, to give you breakthrough, and you seem to not see it. You don't see even the light at the end of the tunnel. But I don't want you to give up hope because that's what the enemy wants. Those thoughts of hopelessness, those thoughts of despair, all the what ifs that scare you, you don't want to think about those, do you? And if you don't want to think about those thoughts, they're not from you. So resist those thoughts, do not take ownership of them, and reject them in the name of Jesus. And so while you are waiting for breakthrough, you know, I've mentioned this in other videos, and um, Dr. Woodward has given me this simple advice, and that's to stay teachable and continue to trust in God. Because there is a purpose for your trial right now. In every detail, in every tear, there's meaning, there's purpose. And I know some of you are saying it's been going on so long. I haven't heard God speak or comfort me for so long. It still has meaning. There's still purpose in everything you're going through. And so I want you to be encouraged by just the different ways that God could lead you to break through. First, let's start with a promise. Psalm chapter 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. You know, I don't believe that God desires for you and me to live in constant anxiety, depression, all the afflictions that come with those two things. I don't believe God wants children of God to live in that kind of bondage. But however, he does allow that kind of season in our lives to do good in our character, to do good in teaching us to be humble and rely on God, to put our trust in him alone. And so when it comes as discipline, it's good. However, I do not believe God wants us to stay in that kind of circumstance forever, especially when we're done with this life. We'll be done with all pain and suffering. But even in this life, I do not believe God wants us to endure that kind of thing forever. And so while you wait, you might be hoping for different kind of breakthroughs, maybe Someone prays for you and you're healed. Maybe you read a specific Bible verse and you're healed. And it might be a gradual thing where you kind of fight the enemy uphill. You take just two steps a day, but you're gaining ground. But the next day you might have lost five steps. But the next week you go up 30 steps. It's a constant battle where every step is fought for, but you're going up. And so the different kind of breakthroughs come in different ways. And I believe God chooses that path that works best for us, that teaches us the best. It might be insomnia like it was for me, where I had to rely on God's grace to get me through each day where I thought I didn't have enough sleep. And I said, no, the Bible says that his grace is sufficient for me. And it could be some of you that are going through panic attacks where it hurts. You're afraid that it's going to strike at any time. And it causes symptoms that feels like you have a heart attack or a stroke. And God wants you to trust your body, your future, whatever happens to you, to him, your creator. And that constant surrender is what he wants to teach you through maybe that kind of episode, that season in your life. And so I want to just share just some of the ways that God has provided breakthrough for me. And it's um, not always the same. And so that main trial I went through about seven years ago now, it was that uphill battle. It was like just making my right leg go ahead and then my left leg following. And then the right leg just crawling up this mountain and trying to just use the shield of faith to block the arrows being fired at me. And it took a lot of time. I mean, when I say a lot of time, for me, it was three months of just uphill battle. For others, it might be much longer or much shorter. But that's how God healed me from a lot of my mental afflictions. And the mental afflictions that caused the physical symptoms, all of that was healed. 
And after that trial, I thought I was pretty much invincible because I learned to surrender to God. And I thought, well, if anything comes again, I will surrender and I will know how to get out of every like trying trial that comes my way. And I was wrong. You know, when COVID came, I went into this spiral of fear and I'm convinced, although others may not be convinced, but I was demonically oppressed. And with that fear just did something where I had the sensation of being choked from like 11 a.m. to about 9 p.m. each day. And like just steam stuck in my chest that caused a lot of pain where you're just in so much pain. I was in so much pain from like 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. that it felt like my eyeballs were shaking. It was just so much pain. And no matter how much I surrendered, no matter how much I claimed a promise of God, that affliction did not go down just at all. It was so intense and it brought me to my knees regularly to just weep out of desperation. And I didn't know if this would ever end. But during that time, I just focused on trusting in him that he has a plan for me, that this discipline is good for me. He's doing it out of love. And I stayed teachable. I said, Lord, what do you want me to learn through this? And I believe God opened my eyes to some of the things that I was sinning in my life. And those two afflictions, you know, it didn't go away gradually. It didn't go away by me wearing the armor of God and resisting the devil. But the first neck thing, it instantly disappeared when I just showed up for church. And my pastor said, open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1 and 2. And it was before 11 a.m. It was like um, our service starts at 1045. And he read, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. I knew that was the Lord speaking. I just knew. And when that 11 o'clock passed, I didn't feel that choking sensation. I was completely free from that. And so the following weeks, I was really hoping that chest pain would go next. And when that Sunday passed and my pain was still there, I was so disappointed because I was expecting another Bible verse or something. I just wanted that pain to go away and it wasn't going away. But it was just like about two weeks or so. I don't know if I'm remembering correctly, but just not that long afterwards, I was at a restaurant with my family and I was in a lot of pain again in my chest area. And I couldn't hide it in front of my family anymore. I was trying to do like little games with my daughters. And I just told them, girls, I'm in so much pain. I can't do this right now. And I remember just at that restaurant, Lord, I have nothing to be afraid. Of. This pain in my chest is good for me. You're using it for my good. So I thank you, Jesus. I praise your name. I glorify your name and I praise you, Jesus, for your goodness. And like a vacuum cleaner over my head just sucked out all that steam of anxiety from my chest and I was completely healed. And so those two things left me without an upward battle. I just had to endure and God healed me in his way in time. And I have to admit after that time, and even these days, I wonder why God will let me go through so much pain. That was really scary for me. But I know that God has good intentions. I still don't know exactly why, um, but I think it was to steer me away from certain sins that I was uh, struggling with. And um, God freed me from it. He just showed me, I believe, but I, I'm not sure if that was it, but I don't have to be. You know, because I know that God is always perfect in his ways even when it hurts like crazy in my life, even when there's loss, suffering, a lot of bewilderment at times, I know that my God is faithful and he is faithful to all of his children. And so whatever you're going through right now, God knows 
whatever you're going through. He knows your pain, your circumstance, all the fears you have. And what I really encourage you to do is just trust in him with everything that's going on right now. And to be able to fully trust him requires you to fully surrender. Surrender and trust work hand in hand. Say, Lord, I don't understand why I'm going through this. I don't know if I'll ever get better, but I just surrender all my circumstances and my what ifs and futures into your hands. And I take your promises and I claim them and I will wait on you. And at the same time, you know that God didn't allow these things to happen in accident. He knows what he's doing. So you trust in his sovereignty and you say, Lord, teach me whatever you want to teach me. I'm hurting right now and you know that. But at this time, I know you're building my character. You're doing this for my good. So Lord, I humble myself and show me what you want me to learn and just keep walking with him. And don't set up any expectations either. Oh man, that's so painful when those expectations don't come true. Like what I did after I got healed that first time. I was like, oh, this next Sunday's, so I'm going to get healed. And I didn't. And that drive back home was so discouraging. It hurt so bad. It made my pain double. And so just keep trusting in God and stay teachable and let God just give you the pathway to breakthrough. Because he's going to do what's best for you. You don't need to worry about how it's done or when it's done. But the most important thing is that you don't give up during this time. Don't take your life. Don't call it quits. Don't turn your back on God or your family or your church or your friends. But stay faithful in our God who is faithful to us. His word is true no matter how you feel or what Ever circumstance you're in, he keeps his promises. Job 23 verse 10 says, But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. So it may be with you. May the Lord see you through, give you strength to endure all things, all fires and waters and obstacles. And so that when you come forth, you'll come forth as gold after this trial. And oftentimes, it's not just one trial. As many of you know, that refining process happens again and again. And it's for our good again and again. God knows what he's doing. You don't need to worry. I don't need to worry. Just stay teachable and keep trusting in him. He will lead you in the best, best path for breakthrough in your life. It's just a matter of time. God bless you.